I don't think Ursa would have been my first choice uh, for Aristotle here because Pango is still pretty good against it, but Ursa, once he gets Basher, he can kind of overwhelm, but... Well, uh, and I saw in a few games, some teams were actually using the Ursa mainly as a counter for the Monkey King. Some teams seeing it as a solution to the Monkey matchup. M Monkey is just the strongest hero in Dota, plain and simple as of right now. And Ursa just is able to keep the stacks going and fight. In, I think he's the only hero as of right now that can fight in the Monkey King Ultimate. So they might just trying to find a solution for the Monkey at this stage of the of the draft. It's usually the other thing. Actually, I want to jump onto that is that I've been seeing if it's not Ursa, it's Troll. Yeah, Troll's been getting a weird resurface as well, and I don't want to say it's because of the Ags, but like. His ads it's, is it's, one yeah, of the bigger yeah. reasons behind why he's able to fight against the Monkey King in his ult as well. Uh, I think in this scenario, the fact that there's a Pango, the Ursa is better because Enrage is more useful. And the problem with Troll is, is that he could get just CC'd really hard by the current existing supports on the side of Undying. Mm -hmm. Or it could be, could be, all right, hear me out. Theory time. This is my favorite thing to do. Theory time. Mid troll. I like it. I, if <laughs> if if it's confirmed, the pango is going to be mid. I think. Up. Uh, no. No troll. No. Tr they ban troll. Okay. They ban I think troll. that's fine because now, like, if they want to run the monkey mid, then they literally have nothing else to worry about. Unless for some reason they run OD, but OD is literally the worst hero in Dota at this point. I've seen. Yeah. OD. The only reason OD gets picked up is if there's a troll in the game. And then it is a sad troll game with the OT of the game. Well, and we'll see. I mean, if Undying Five, really seven, wanted to, three. I mean, at this point, they just want heroes to build Yule Scepters naturally, right? They're just going to send the Ursa up in the air, make it impossible for him to fight. But they could pick OD if they wanted to. The Quat ban kind of indicates that, but it might just be a, a comfort hero they don't want to play versus. Flash. Puck. Ah, still Puck. All right. I'm okay with this. Puck, like you were saying, is still really good in this scenario for the side of Aristotle. They have two big team fight based ultimates now, as well as just Dark Willow being able to fear. They've got great counter stun initiation. The only problem is, is that Aristotle's supports are a little three. bit squishy. You can't. Dark Willow's not a great four in my eyes. Five seconds. In comparison yeah, I don't to think Earth Spirit, been, I guess. Uh... I don't think there have been enough buffs before uh, when she was very strong. Both of her spells were much better numbers wise, but also Spirit Vessel was just a lot better stats wise. So she felt a lot stronger, but now nothing gives you stats more or less that she builds. So she is going to be that squishy hero playing into Earth Spirit Monkey. And like you said, I think every single spell except for maybe Cast goes through the Shadow Realm. So she's not very survivable in this draft. I mean, I think... I think even if, if the cask bounces, she'll still get hit by it, too. Like, it, it won't make her, like, completely, quote-unquote, untargetable. And Ricky, all right, so I went to the front page of Dota Buff to figure out what I wanted to talk about in Dota this week. And it literally was, Ricky is, and I quote, the hero that got buffed that nobody is talking about. And immediately we see the Tomato Ricky being picked up. I like this a lot. It gives him great pickoff potential, which Undying is kind of already lacking. Uh, except for Moon Meander, because Moon Meander Earth Spirit is literally God. Or Earth Spirit mm -hmm. in general is literally God. But like, like a Ricky is great pickoff. The only problem is, is that Ricky has a very, very low HP pool at the start of the game and can get picked easily, which is probably going to happen quite a bit since the Mars is a like an S-tier offlaner against this Ricky. That and the Puck, I mean, it, it's a dual-edged sword, right? The Puck, you pick the Ricky into the Puck because, you know, if Puck gets clouded, he's dead, basically. But he can't do anything if he is uh, Requiemed. So the Requiem, I mean, these team fights are really going to dictate the flow of the game, I think, how effective everybody's going to be. But like you said, Ricky, one of the best Orb of Corrosion uh, users, probably the top three carries in the patch, just so strong now. Yeah, there's a lot of new items that definitely. Put I don't know about sleep game. dart. I don't know how I feel about sleep dart, but everything else about Ricky is uh, just I, about. I don't think you solid. take sleep dart uh, in any way, shape, or form. Maybe if it was like, because alchemist can alchemist give shards? If there was a four alchemist in the game and you could give shards, 
And then he can't give shards, but he can give berserk potions. He can give berserk <laughs> potions. <laughs> we can't give shards. He can give eggs. He can give eggs. Yeah. But like, if if it were possible for a four, see, here's the other thing too: is that four alchemist is a real thing now too, because you could literally just. The game gets really late. You could give people ags if they already have it. That's literally giving them 4,200 gold. Exactly. But anyway, into the game now. Uh, sleep dart, I don't think it's going to be a big thing that they'll take here. I can't imagine it's super useful, but it, it kind of acts like, what, like a Bane sleep, except for it doesn't transfer to the user who wakes them. Precisely. Yep. Oh, this is my favorite thing. The uh, the immediate NA Dota bots. No. Beautiful. So, yes. If all throughout history, North American and South American Dota, there's always this pause that happens right at the very beginning of every game. And it's just, you know, it you got to expect it. You got to expect it. But Let's this imagine gives you time both teams to, are just talking. Yeah, I mean, you got you to gotta remember that a lot of these guys that are playing are literally guys that are just... Are literally guys that are just uh, like playing literally every day in pubs. Like most of them see each other literally all the time. So it's not... It's not terribly surprising for them to be like, oh boy, that's the pause. Now, I was looking at Dubu's ticketed games. He's he's got something like forty games in the past three days. He is he is ready for this qualifier. If anything, I I'm ready for a, a Dubu performance. I'm not gonna lie. I was low key hoping that Arkosh was actually gonna make it in because I've spent a bit of time with some of the Arkosh. Uh, Arkosh management team and I saw them go up against Luki Luki in the qualifiers and I'm like, oh my god, it's a rematch. A real rematch too. <laughs> that, that's about. Oh my yeah. goodness. It was good well, too. It was a really good game. It wasn't like super bad. Yeah. But like, you know, they didn't get in. And uh Luki Luki makes it through, so Luki's gonna get the chance to prove that their team is the uh the superior here. But now we <laughs> Okay, demon. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, with that aside, now we're in our game. It's game one of Undying versus Aristotle. Uh, we've got Moon Meander. It's going to be running the Earth Spirit, as we saw during the draft. Following that will be Brile, Monkey King in the mid. Saber Light will be running the Pengalier up in the off lane, by the looks of it. And then Witch Doctor will be ran by Dubu and Tomato on the signature Ricky. Because I remember a long time ago, Tomato actually picked up. Oh, Ricky. yeah, he, he played that a lot back yeah. in the day. Let's look at his. He, I, he's probably got some decent stats. Let's look at his. Oh, he doesn't have any stats. Never mind. He has 664 he, kills on his one blade, though. He, he's hiding his stats in that blade. He, he, is, he is a vetted Ricky player. Yep, but and on the side of the dire now. The demon will be the crystal maiden, the very squishy maiden that I'm always kind of 50-50 on when people pick it up. But uh, as long as they spec the right spell at level 1, they're pretty much good to go. Puck will be in the mid, played by Prince, while Mars is going to be played by the Bloody Sky. With the fate of the which universe Dark Willow will be played by Zabu. And Reese's, or Rice's, will be the Ursa in the safe lane. And it is... Let's see... Yeah, so it's Pango against that. They're yeah, they're gonna run the. They didn't swap any lanes or anything like that. Tomato is gonna be up against the Mars and Dark Willow, and that is a rough lane for the Ricky. But as soon as he gets some levels, he'll be able to secure ranged creeps. But that that bottom lane is definitely uh, gonna be a little bit scary to play into, I think, for the Ricky. Well, luckily your Witch Doctor is here. That's the best thing you really got against this one. But looking at the HP totals, Witch Doctor. Has the same amount of HP as Ricky while Ricky's got... No, actually, it's because they've got triple branches. But look at this already. Tomato's at half HP. He can't do anything. Almost getting knocked into another bramble bush there. And it's just already. He's kind of shut down. I mean, he's got five tangies. And we've got a salve on the Witch Doctor. So that's going to be used up already. But already you're using up the regen. And you don't really want to be doing that. Yeah, as soon as he gets the Orb of Corrosion, everything kind of changes for him. Especially when he hits 6, but that is a, a long time away, and he can't really be left alone in this lane. But Doobie's, Doobie's got some good trades going. He's kind of turning the lane in their favor already. I mean, Witch Doctor's got some nice right-click damage. He's also got that early Fairy Fire, so he's hitting that 64 damage hit with Armor Negation, usually putting it around, like, maybe 53 to 51. So he's still being able to pump a lot of damage here, but... Uh, Top actually, Demon, 
getting jumped on by Moon Meander here. No Orb of Venom, though, which is a very standard Earth Spirit pickup item you see at the early phases there, usually to get this kind of chase, but... Uh, not gonna, not yeah, gonna Moon was uh, pulling the uh, the creep wave for his uh, for his oh, pango. Mid. Actually, mid, yeah. yeah I just Almost saw that Brawl's HP was like literally none, and I'm like, oh, that's that's weird. But you know that that's the other thing though is that Puck actually has a lot of damage against the Monkey King in the mid here. Like Puck is an amazing pick for this Monkey King in the mid. It is gonna be really hard for him to lane. Brawl's got a salve coming out to him now, I think, so he will be able to uh, be fine in the lane for now, pushing the wave in as well. But uh, this lane is not easy. It's definitely an uphill battle. Hopefully uh, the monkey can carry the Brile in this game, I think. The monkey can carry the Brile? <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, he's going to need rotations. But on the bright side, they have the they have Moon Meander or Spirit. So they could just get that rotation coming out. I'm sure that Brile's kind of waiting for a little bit more in Jinju in order to get a good fight here. Like... Yeah, he just wants to continually push this presence on there. He just needs some damage. He'll be good to go. Yeah, and it does get very scary for the Puck later on, because you never know when there's a monkey in the trees. The Boundless Strike does so much damage just out of the blue. And, I mean, he's not rank uh, 2 or whatever he is for nothing, right? Right. <laughs> he's not a high-ranked Dota 2 player for, for no reason whatsoever. You can see he does throw the Boundless there, so he will get the lifesteal that he's much needed in this lane. Back up in the top, though. Pango's in a bit of trouble. Starts the TP out. Demon. Actually, level 2 does not have Frostbite. So, this whole mess is all your fault? Yeah, I think Radiant are actually doing this pretty Back well in the, in the top lane. Maledict out on the bloody sky. He's dead one way or another here. He's trying to find a trade, but he skewers the Ricky instead. Dubu will still fall. It is going to be a wow. shared bounty, though, and Ricky will confirm. Actually, Ricky doesn't get the kill. Dubu does, but still there for the XP. Well, that's not great, though. That's a 279 first blood. Traded there. Yeah, split Here. between two heroes. Mars is able to just bring his items over to the will as well, just resetting the lane for him. Good news is Ricky's got his orb, so that that's that's going to be annoying. But yeah, as you can see here, chat, it's 150 health. It does the reducing armor as well as orb of venom effect. So it is uh, quite effective. Speaking of effective, though, back in the mid, roll goes out. It's going to miss on Prince while Brawl throws out a staff, trying to find a. Stun there, but unable Nothing to get it. We'll grab this DD room. That was a really measured response from Prince. If if he got greedy and orb there, he would have just been in in the waking hands of uh, Brile. But the instead, you know, was very calm in that situation. You know, with Moon Manor rolling up on you, I don't know if I would have been the same. He's not leaving though. He's staying around. They've got a ward here on the high ground though, so they'll see it if it happens. The DD rune. Giving much needed damage against Prince, and it looks like Brile's just gonna die. Her roll goes through, it's gonna whip. It's not, they're not done yet. Brile, though, Jinju Mastery, he's got more move speed, but the root oh, is there from Demon, though. Demander trying to find something else here. The roll is gonna push it back, and Brile gonna die to tower damage, and Demon to actually find the right click, not the tower. Now, Moon Meander might be in a bit of trouble here. They have a stun available with wand charges if they need it. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Dubu manages to get the kill out onto this Mars. Moon Meander needs to roll away, he's under the tower, and he'll be perfectly fine. Able to get that Perfect rotation damage. from Demon. Demon, I, I was waiting to see who was going to TP mid, and it was literally the perfect TP in. Puck also played it perfectly. He, uh, I don't know if, if it was a bait, but the perfect phase shift on the rolling boulder, he was able to avoid everything, Jukin and Jiven. Able, able to dodge a lot there. These are pro tier players. I remember uh, Demon, I think he was coach for the one time that I saw him at Summit, but... Like, there's a lot of communication that goes on between Demon and everybody else. And, uh... Sorry, chat. I didn't know I had the winter map on still. <laughs> My bad. I guess it's not winter anymore, right? There's no reason to have the winter map on anymore. Te technically still January. It doesn't feel like Back it, though. The but they coil mid. Yeah, there's a coil. The silence is there. Meanwhile, Rises dies up in the top lane. The Witch Doctor rotation. They're slow, they'll slow things down here. Brile trying to dodge the stun. Will still fall. And they managed to get a beautiful trade here, but they will get the kill on Prince. But this is Dubu yet again claiming another kill. You really want to be the, the you really want to be Monkey King getting these kills and not the Witch Doctor. But you can't really... Oh, hang on. Oh, Actually, Demon. Manders not done. He doesn't have a roll, though. So this one is out of there. 
Yeah, yeah Doobie but... with this level 3 Maldick, he's actually level 5. He is so strong on the Witch Doctor right now. This bottom lane's been very fruitful for him. But this level 3 Maldick oh, it really, cool. really hurts. That level 3 Maldick already coming back in. He's ready to get this kill on the bot lane. They are going to go ahead and throw the tricks. Is Blood going to make it, though? The stun yeah. is there. We'll slow it down, but he still dies in the found. fountain. That's that burn damage from the Witch Doctor doing a lot. Like you're saying, level 3 Maledict is insane. 32% burst. Yep, yeah, back up and top, though. They get this kill on Rises. Now it looks like Undying finally able to make the trades that they want. Sure, they're missing they're uh, missing the mid lane, but uh, they're getting trades everywhere else where they need to be. Well, and just perfectly played in the top lane. They know that they have the slight level advantage on Saberlight, and they just push it. He's level 5 on Ursa, he's level 6 on Pango, and just rolls on top of him. So I did realize that Bryle, he wasn't he wasn't exactly keen to specking into his ult at the very beginning, because usually on a Monkey King, you don't even get your ult really early, because it's just... You usually skip it. Yeah, but he was in a very, like, combat stress scenario. He might have been like, okay, well, maybe if I get armor, this will help me, help me here in the mid. But, yeah. But uh, unable to uh, really capitalize on that, so he's got to, like... He's got to take a little step back. He's got to get some more respected levels because he wants to end up getting more in his tree dance and boundless now. Well, and the crazy thing about this monkey hero in this new patch is that it I, it really feels like no matter what you do to him in lane, as soon as he gets his phase boot, maybe a wand, and gets that maelstrom, it really doesn't matter. He'll just be able to recover in any situation. Oh, and they're going on mid. Yeah, Bryle trying to get the stun. He couldn't end up getting it, though, but the Monkey King is there. Follow-up, and the Witch Doctor throwing out the, the ward. Unfortunately, with nobody nearby, it's not really going to land on anything, and will end up stunning both of them here. Bryle might be in a bit of trouble. I say that, though. Dubu apparently says, wait for it, but Prince is going to be able to survive with this one. Bryle needs to get out of here. Dubu in a very precarious spot on the low ground here. We'll throw out a casket to see if it bounces to the right direction, but actually doesn't hit a hero a single time, but still... Able to find the disengage at the end of the day. And Ursa actually fe felt like he needed to come mid. This top lane's just kind of been abandoned. The Pango with the Orb of Corrosion is just too much for the Ursa at this stage of the game. And his top tower is just going to fall, most likely. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if after the qualifiers, we're going to see a lot of nerfs and very specific things. I thought the nerf for stuff was going to happen, like, maybe... Maybe like four days ago, I'd say. Like maybe before the open qualifiers for everything. But like, we we've yet to see nerves on nerfs on things. And Orb of Corrosion is one of those items. Speaking of which, Orb of Corrosion being in the bot. Down in the bot. Blood Sky is going to be in trouble here. That Maledict just tearing through, but save. But actually, he misses the stun there. Hits it on a creep, but able to find that tray. Throwing out the whoops, but don't think that would have changed much though we do have prince coming in from the buck from the mid lane here he does have the dream coil going out we'll drop the silence and there's enough burst damage here to put this witch doctor in the grave. Spirit. they do throw out a maledict lands on one the smoke is going to be there for silence from tomato trying to chase more here demon will get caught out and tomato able to find a two-man trade off of this one but the only one to escape being prince trying to dodge the maledict damage but playing it a little bit slow there he might be in trouble still as the earth spirit roll comes in moon meander looking for somebody oh. here and he needs to be a He's little bit courier. careful. Saberlight here. He's, uh, I think he just got scouted out by that courier. But he, uh, he's out of the top lane. He claimed that tower. And he's just looking to rotate on the rest of the map. Stun goes out. Ryle, the roll is there. It's going to whiff from Prince again. Prince just playing this puck perfectly. But with four heroes and three heroes in the mid, they are going to be able to find this kill. And my, most likely the kill on Demon here is the roll from Saberlight. will confirm it. And Dubu yet again to claim another kill. Yeah, 5-2-2. Two, and two. Dubu is uh, owning in this game. And this mid tower is going to be under a lot of pressure now. Saberlight with the perfect rotation gets two kills and now the cart's here. This, this tower is going to be hard to defend. Mars might even have to come. I don't think... You, yeah, you don't want to give away this mid tower right now. Bryle with an arcane rune as well. So if they want to, they could even drop the ult if they need it. But they're going to let it float for the time being. Oh, and Tomato is just getting a free lane now. Like, forcing all these heroes into the mid lane just means that Tomato is getting a faster and faster defusal timing. And I mean, at this rate, he's going to have it at, you know, 12, 13 minutes. And that's before even Puck is able to form up a Yules or any defensive measure. And that's when this game gets really hard, I think. Let's see. Like you were talking about, it is going to be difficult for them to be able to defend. Uh, the pickoff potential with that defusal. Yeah, it's it's going to be scary, 
I don't think there's much that they'll be able to do once they start picking off. Here's the the only thing is is that the Monkey King hasn't been farming the whole entire game. Yeah. So he, he is he's... a little bit behind. He's got the tome. He's he's actually up on levels now with that tome purchase, but once he gets to that maelstrom, it's just going to be smooth sailing, I think. See if it he queues it up soon. now, right? Because you don't build you don't build Silver's Edge anymore on Monkey because it's not part of Shadowblade. No, it is Shadowblade. It's not part of Echo. It is so Shadowblade, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you would build Echo on on Monkey King's levels all the time. Stun out the top lane. Rise is going to be in trouble. Disarmed. The slow is there from it. Well, looking to get that the least TPs. The click there, but not going to find it. Prince does TP in. They do have Coil if they want to be defensive with it. And they will drop the Coil. Only lands on one, while Saber Light on the sideline still trying to find pickoff here. Does have the roll. Isn't going to land on this Crystal Maiden. That doesn't need, they don't need it, though. Demon will go down to the Witch Doctor ult, as well as a silence perfectly timed by Tomato here. Arena thrown on the low ground, though. Tomato not scared by this at all. The fear is going to be there, slowing down this Pango, as well as the double stun. It will land on Tomato, as well as Saber. He will go down, rises with a Maledict, though. Brile looking to find the last click on that Dubu, one. Dubu yet kill. again claiming another kill. That's a triple for him. Brile trying to find somebody on the sidelines here. They find the silence immediately out on Sosbo, and he will find this kill with a four- one or four, not even one trade there, just four and using ultimates. Easy picking, is he easy pickings for undying and specifically Witch Doctor? They're not even oh, done they yet. They one. find Demon on the sidelines, and now the BM tip goes out there as well. Oh. And these, the, all of this fighting, all of this successful team fighting is going on without any of their core items. I mean, they've got an urn on one hero and just three orbs of corrosion, and they're just <laughs> these heroes are just so strong right now. Yeah, orb is orb is something, man. It, I, it has to be nerfed, right? It's literally just, it's the strongest thing ever. Like, what what do you do to nerf? What do you do to nerf this item? Get take the health away? No, even then it's still gonna be OP. It's being OP. Yeah, it's, moon meander it's... again. On to Bloody Sky here. The Monkey King comes in. The Quill goes through. It lands on two, but this Mars is no stuck fear. in a hard place. He's not gonna get it. Moon. He's gonna be stunned though. He's gonna walk up to high ground to try to stun Pryl on purpose. Ryle, jumping around, oh, and they're moving Tomato in. Is oh, keeping no. and creeping. He finds Demon. Demon goes down. Jump goes out from Ryle, unable to find the follow up, though. Prince is going to be able to blink away for the time being. The silence goes through, but the no cat is going to Dufu. Just going crazy. He finds this kill on Tomato, looking for more. They find the kill out onto Sazbo, and that is yet again. A technical team wipe because the Ursa has been farming in bot lane the whole time. Ooh, that spear almost picking off Tomato almost there, though. But Tomato. finally, they will get this mid tower, and they will start taking over the map as if they as if they haven't already been doing so. Moon Meander though in a bit of trouble down in the bot lane here, but Rises is, is going to get pushed away. But you got to be so scared. You see, you see them all coming, and they're going to settle for another demon, demon kill. But <laughs> no, Brile, you're going to. Oh man, that that's the sad part, right? Is that like you could tilt people into oblivion by doing just that oh, alone. Roll. And now again, the Pango roll with Duba with the Maledict rises, trying to find a good angle to stay in. The arena's gonna be there. It's not gonna slow down Saber yet oh, again. Moon might go down. Sasbo trying to fight something here. Moon is getting pretty low. They do drop the fear. It hits nobody. And Ryo throwing out the Wukong command. They get this double kill. Tomato eats the dirt. Saber like picking off on the sidelines. They get four. The only one not there is Demon, who's still in the base from his previous death. So, a technical five-man team wipe yet again. And I'm dying, and just taking just, this game. The gold lead is just extending at this point. He, he doesn't even feel like he needs the Maelstrom on Monkey. He's just getting a Desolator at this point. And, I mean, it feels like one of those games. At the, it's just so it one-sided at this point. I mean, looking at the win probability, it does say it's 97% with a 3% favoring the Dire. And then looking at that net worth chart, speaking of which net worth again, they might be able to pick up Bloody Sky here if they find him, and they will because he's getting slammed by this Witch Doctor ultimate oh. here. Demon yes. trying to pop ult on the sidelines, Tomato unable to find the full smoke, like literally on the clip. If particle effects were a thing, it should have been affecting that one, but it doesn't matter as Demon hit, it's the dirt from Brile yet again, and Brile just not afraid. He wants to chase further, but they do drop the coil the as well, turns list. into a tree, yep. but yep, Boundless is available, and they find this kill yet again. Easy oh, no, pickets the for Ursa. them. They find the Ursa on the sidelines. He hits the dirt too, and Demon. 
They're calling the GG. 16 minutes in, 29 and 5, 15k net worth lead on dying to take game number one. That was quick. <laughs> that was that was quick. I mean, they just never let up. It was just as soon as Saberlight rotated out of the top lane, it was just bot jungle to mid to top to bot jungle to mid. It was just perfect rotations coming out and everything. I don't think there was ever a misstep. Everything was always successful. You had some early game deaths from Brile that you were just unavoidable with the coil. But after that, I mean, there was zero missteps. And I mean, Dubu 10, 2 and 12. <laughs> you, you, it reads for itself, you know. That that's that's Witch Doctor, man. It's uh, it's definitely the the strongest combination there. But uh, yeah, they Orb of Corrosion. I think that's I think that's the name of our game, right? It's not Dota Two anymore. It's Orb of Corrosion gameplay. Every definitely. core is gonna go this if they haven't been already. Ursa wasn't even actually no, he was kind of close to finishing Battle Fury, but still, Orb of Corrosion gaming. <laughs> Well, in that Reiki pick, like we saw it for we saw it for what the first minute, minute and a half, where the lane was like, okay, this is gonna be kind of a rough lane. But then Dubu just clawed it back. He just had the trades and was able to put up for his uh, safe laner. And then after that, I mean, he had that huge level advantage. He was like level five and a half when Mars was just peaking level four, and that Maledict just shreds through every hero on the uh, on the dire. And then after that, it was just easy pickings. Yep. Now I'm. I want to be like. What? What do they even ban for the next game? Like you probably ban Tomato Ricky, right? But that's it. Maybe. No, you ban. Yeah. No, you ban. No, it's. What do you ban? It's, it's so hard. Yeah. Like you can look I, at the I, witch I think doctor, you have to like... ban the monkey, right? Because the monkey just gives your other lane so much kill potential. I think that's that's the first start because that hero is just ridiculous. But after that, I, I don't know. We'll have to see how Aristotle decided to draft it. Because this they had a really high team fight, kind of low damage draft. And they still got just decimated by the timings from the Radiant team. Well, with, the, with that being said, ladies and gents, hopefully they do end up getting these bans out for the next game. Because the next game is already underway. I say that it's not underway. We, we got to get in the lobby first. But... It'll be underway very shortly, so stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with game number two.